Hi, everybody. Happy Media Day. Thank you all for coming. I know this is a little early for some media folks, but this is our practice block, so this is what we're doing every day. Um, thank you all for another season of uh, Maryland Women's Basketball. Thank you for your coverage. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, this is head coach Brenda Fries' 21st season here. Um, so excited to get going. Just a few announcements. Um, if you're not parked in the loading dock and you're in one of the surface lots, like lot 4B, just want to make sure you either got a parking pass from the attendant or you talk to one of our staff members, uh, you will get a ticket if you don't have a parking pass or you're not, or you're not in the loading dock. If you're in the loading dock, you're okay. But um, they're pretty ruthless around here with tickets. Um, <laughs> Brenda will be up here. Uh, she'll have an opening statement and then we'll take uh, questions until 10.20. Um, and then at that point, the coaches and players will be available over here at the round tables and for some one-offs. Um, most of the team will be available until 11 a.m. Um, a few players do have to leave for class. They have 11 a.m. class. So Faith Masonas, Elisa Pinzon, and Lavender Briggs all have to leave around 1040 to change and get to class. So might want to make your way over to them first since they have a shortened time out here. Um, wireless information, preseason notes, a PDF copy are all available. Um, they're all in the email that I sent out last night, but they're available in our virtual press box. It's ter.ps slash press box. That's ter.ps slash press box. Um, the credential application link is live. I know most of you already applied. Uh, come see me if you still need to apply. Uh, there's no deadline and obviously games haven't started. So just come see me if you need that info. Um, first exhibition is next Friday here against Frostburg State uh, on October 28th. And then home season opener is uh, Friday, November 11th against number one, South Carolina. Um, so hope to see you all there. Um, now, now in her 21st season, as I said, two-time National Coach of the Year, Brenda Fries. Thank you, Rose. I also want to echo just we appreciate you guys so much, your coverage year in and year out with our team and our program. The time that you spend means a lot, and it is awesome to finally be back. It's hard to believe that it is already the season is around the corner. I know for us as a team, as a program, and a staff, we couldn't be more excited for what lies ahead. Obviously, uh, we're putting a lot of different pieces together this season, which really has energized our staff each and every practice opportunity as we're learning a lot of new players, just like all of you will be. It's just a, a great puzzle to, to be able to put together. We're, we're looking forward to maximizing our roster. So much talent on this roster and really putting all of them in, in the best positions to, to be successful. A lot of our traits will remain the same. We, we love to play fast. We, we want to run. We want to get up and down the floor. So playing Maryland basketball, those standards for us aren't going to change. We often talk about playing positionless basketball. You're going to see it this year from us. The fact that all of these really good players that we have, there's a ton of versatility for us that we're going to be able to utilize and, and move them around the court in order to, to be successful. I will say when you talk about our returners coming back, obviously we're going to be led by Diamond Miller. And she is A-OK. -okay. She is back and she's healthy. I love what I've been able to see from Diamond. And I think the biggest thing for us and our staff is the fact that this is a player that now has been here four years, someone that I trust completely on the court as well as with her leadership for our team. So it's gonna be exciting to see a healthy Diamond Miller back and she's gonna put a lot on her shoulders for our team this season. All of our returners have all come back better. And that's where you need them to be, Shy, Emma, and Faith. You talk about Faith coming back from an ACL injury. She's ahead of schedule. So we know what that glue player looks like for us. So that's extremely exciting. Nine new players that, that we added into the mix, five transfers, four freshmen. All five transfers all averaged at least nine points per game last season. So again, a lot of scoring options for us that we're going to be able to utilize. Obviously, we were dealt with a tough blow when Allie Kubik went down with an ACL injury. Disappointed for her as she was competing in that starting role for us to give us a lot of size and length. 
but like we do, we, we have to adapt, we have to adjust, no one's gonna feel sorry for us. So we, we continue to put those pieces together. Lavender Briggs, our transfer, SEC experience from Florida. She's someone I've been really impressed with, how she tackles every single day. She, she, she atta attacks every single day like a pro. She's a scoring machine and, and she's gonna give us a lot you know, within, in our offensive system. Abby Myers, Ivy League Player of the Year. Can't say enough for her experience. Just a special player. She's given us so much as a, you know, ultimate leader as well as a scorer that can score in a variety of ways. We're excited for Abby. Eliza Penzan is an incredible point guard. You know, I, I'm not sure we've had a point guard like this in a long time. When you talk about her court vision, her, her IQ to be able to run a team as a fifth year, someone that we're gonna lean on with, with a ton of experience. You know, uh, you know big uh, assist was she, she was the team at South Florida that beat Stanford. So we're looking for that experience that, that she brings to the table. Brene Alexander is another grad transfer for us from Vandy. Again, SEC experience that allows us to be able to have that versatility. She can play outside, she can play inside, has really brought a lot of toughness to the table for us. Our four freshmen are all working really hard to, to kind of you know, separate themselves to be able to bring some experience. You've got Gigi, who's at the point guard position, Gia Cook, very, very fast, can get downhill, tremendous speed at that point guard position. Brianna McDaniel is a player that, you know, is just a, a powerful player, probably one of our best defenders already as a freshman, really, really strong and athletic. Ava Ciola is another player that is really skilled, has a, a high IQ and, and can really shoot the ball. And then you've got Mila Reynolds who, you know, gives us great size, should be a banger for us inside and can, can really shoot the three. We're working for the freshmen just to get caught up. You know, the experience that we have plays a big part. Our freshmen, we're, we're working for them to, to really be able to help us and, and get caught up, which is usually the case when freshmen come in. We are gonna find out about ourselves early and often when you look at our schedule. We have 12 top 25 opponents. The schedule isn't for the week. I saw a tweet the other day, number one, South Carolina. We play number four, Iowa, two times. Number six, Yukon. Number nine, Notre Dame. Number 11, Indiana. Number 14, Ohio State, twice. Number 18, Baylor. Number 22, Nebraska, twice. And number 25, Michigan in the AP poll. Probably the hardest schedule we've ever faced. For our team, it's gonna be a marathon, not a sprint. We'll find out about ourselves really early in the non-conference as we're, we're blending so many new players into the mix. But I also love it. It's gonna prepare us for conference play. It's gonna prepare us for postseason. And really, this is why you come to Maryland, is to play against the best, to be able to have these fun experiences, these games. South Carolina and UConn coming in here, we're, we're excited to be able to see this place packed in those environments. At this time, I'll open it up if you have any questions. Brian to Dave Preston, WTOP Radio. Your coaching tenure can now rent a car this year, 21. Congratulations. <laughs> um, uh, it, it feels as though there have been more changes to the game, inside, especially off the court in the last five years as opposed to the first 15 years you were here. How have you and the staff uh, kept pace with just a, a, a constantly changing landscape? Yeah, I mean, obviously you have to adapt and, and you're definitely right. A lot of changes in, in the last five years. You know, now, you know, we, we look at, we have NIL, we have the transfer portal, but I can't say enough about our staff. Obviously you see all the changes that we, we had being a school like Maryland, all we've been able to do is continue to reload. And we've been in these situations before. And it seems like every single time when we've been through this recruiting process, we continue to get the right players that, that fit us here at Maryland, fit our system, and are really culture winning types of kids. And that's what I love. Our, our staff is energized. I mean, these guys come ready to work every single day. And that's what makes our job so much fun. Yeah. Hey, Brenda. Hey. Um, you were talking earlier about you know pieces of the puzzle, and I'm just curious, you know, I guess where are you guys in that process with so many new faces, trying to figure out rotations, <laughs> trying to figure out who's going to be in the starting lineup? Do you have a, do you feel like you have a sense of that at this point, or is it still 
a process that's still being, I guess, developed? Yeah, it's ongoing. Again, I think your nod right now goes to the experience of your vets because they've been there and have been through those wars, but that doesn't mean we haven't played a game yet. And again, we're gonna find out our, uh, about ourselves when we play these top ranked opponents early. I always mention to these guys, practice matters. These consistency of habits that you're building, your coaches, your teammates have to feel those patterns of consistency because that's what's gonna prepare us for those rotations in game. So, you know, a couple weeks out here and, and I think we'll, we'll have a good feel. But again, it's ever changing. It, obviously, we weren't expecting to lose Allie Cubic, and he, as that situation presented itself, that means someone else has to be ready to step up in the fold. Hello, Brenda. Kevin Richardson with the Baltimore Sun. Hi. How do you hope to uh, tackle the uh, five position um, with someone down low? Yeah, uh, by committee, <laughs> no question. We, we obviously have addressed that you know, our rebounding is going to have to be collective. It's not going to be one or two players. We don't have a 6-5 center that is going to be. So, so we have to adapt, and we might have to play faster. We, we have to be versatile, and we're going to have to collectively rebound together on both ends of the floor. Hey, Coach Freeze, Heather yeah. McDonough, NBC4. Kind of going off what the guys over here were talking about, you've been successful with the, the Katie Benzins, the Chloe's. What is it, or is, it's probably not just one thing, but when you have all these new faces and you're, whether it's, it's the maybe stuff off the court, the bonding, uh, the emphasis on what the coaches are doing and the players on and off the court, what are some of those things that you can kind of maybe pinpoint as to that helps that situation when you've got so many new faces? Yeah, great question. You know, our staff has been super intentional with that chemistry piece. It's a big reason with, with nine new players that you're adding into the fold four freshmen, five upperclassmen. So the chemistry piece has been big off the court, so we're prepared on the court. And, you know, started back when we when the school started, we were able to go off and, and do a team retreat. It was very effective. We've brought in a communication specialist this year. We continue to have, you know, character coaches. So there's a lot of things that, that we intentionally do uh, that prepare us to, to kind of continue to keep building that chemistry quicker. Luckily for us, they all live together, so they're over in their their apartments and they spend a lot of time as well doing a lot of great things, you know, not only at their apartments, they come out to the home, so a lot of things that that we feel are really really important for our chemistry. When can you tell that's clicking or is it just natural over time or is there I think you can tell off the court you can see those personalities develop. I think on the court, it takes time. And when you're putting so many new players in right now, that part, obviously, that's where I say it's going to be a marathon, not a sprint, that we have to have the understanding the, the only player that's been out there, you know, three, three straight years has been Diamond Miller. So, you know, the chemistry piece for other teams that are bringing back five starters, we're bringing back one. So that understanding for, for us as a team and as a program, the standard's gonna be the same. How we compete, how we play is gonna be the same, but also understanding that that chemistry piece does take some time. Just was wondering, uh, you know, obviously bringing the four new transfers in, um, you know, each individual had a lot of scoring experience at their past yeah. school. What's it been like getting them to adjust to a new offense that, um, you know, obviously Diamond and the going to be the centerpiece, but what's it been like with for each individual having them to adjust to a new system and things among that nature? Yeah, it takes time. I, I think, you know, our offensive system that we've put in allows them to play, so they're not really pigeonholed into a position. So I think as a player, you always want that kind of freedom. We're really excited as a staff because they all can score. And, you know, that's obviously – with all the scoring that we, we lost, it, you know, we've got to be able to have, you know, those type of players that, that are, can, can come in and are capable. And again, you know, those, you know, five transfers, but four that, that are going to be eligible this year can all score the basketball. Hey, Coach, how are hey. you? Um, last season, the, the motto was complete the mission. I was wondering if there's a, a theme or a slogan for this season. There is. We haven't announced it yet, so it will be coming out shortly. But yeah, it, there will be. <laughs> Great question. 
Damon Brooks Testudo Times. Coach, with the team not featuring much size as your past teams, do you anticipate getting out in transition more than you have in previous seasons? Yeah, we're going to have to. You know, speed kills. We're going to have to use that, that speed in the, in the full court, whether, you know, defensively, offensively, again, playing to your strengths. And, and you're right. I mean, the, the size isn't where it's been, but we do have great size on the perimeter. So the fact that we have that kind of length, you know, within the perimeter positions, the versatility that we have. So again, just utilizing that to, to our strength. Ashley Press Box. Um, Brenda, with so much new, what have been your impressions of what you guys can do this year? And maybe anything that surprised you with uh, this team so far? I, I think it's really fun for us as a staff just continuing to, to learn our team and, and put them in positions to, to be successful. And, you know, we're learning each and every one of them, whether it be a freshman, you know, like I said, a Brianna McDaniel who's come in and you're like, wow, she's, she's really further ahead defensively than, than where we expected her to be. That's awesome. That, that's going to serve us well. Our transfers, just to have that kind of experience, they, they've been through the wars. Emma Chardon, to me, has been probably the most improved player of the returners coming back. Just the fact that her game has really slowed down. She's going to give us a lot of rebounding where we're going to need it. And, you know, she just, again, I can't say enough, when you have that experience after a year, two years under your belt, she, she's really come in and, and has been probably our most improved player. Hey, Coach, Olivia Janik for the Diamondback. You've talked a lot about how much you're excited about the versatility of this team. How is that going to help you on defense this year? Yeah, I, you know, obviously we're going to be able to, you know, we, we can do a lot of things defensively just because of the fact that we're so versatile. So, again, whether that's in the full court, half court, you know, being able to, to be aggressive, I think we can scout and put a great game plan together because we are positionless. And, you know, within that, that gives us a lot of creativity as a staff. Hi, Brenda. Lorenzi Moten with PGC TV. Okay, so a little question not about basketball, like on the court things. You have a lot of multifaceted ladies on your team. Are there any NIL deals maybe like you guys are going to do collectively? They're, they're right now all individually. So they have secured, you know, a lot of NIL deals. We're very fortunate the location where we're at, you know, third largest media market in our backyard, the brand name of Maryland. And you know what our athletic department has done. They they've hired a new NIL director. So you know our players are given a tremendous opportunity and advantage. Now it's up to them to do the work. <laughs> we can't secure those for them. So you know they've been active. You know putting in as much work and 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 the time that they have. So you know I can't say enough for them that they've put in the the work to secure the deals that that they are hoping to get. Hey, Coach, Daniel Sarber from WMC Sports. You guys have obviously been perennial championship contenders during your time in the Big Ten, and this year you were fin picked to finish fourth in the preseason polls. Does this give you guys, like, an extra chip on your shoulder to try to come in and prove that you're still the top dog in the Big Ten? <laughs> of course, if you're a competitor, the, the standard is the standard. I think you've seen, you know, where those, those teams ahead of us you know, they, they've brought back a lot of their, their experience, so it, it makes sense, you know, with where their rosters are at. Some players have taken their additional COVID years, so that's really, you know, improved their roster. But for us, nothing changes. Every time we step out on the floor, the, the way we want to compete and where we've set the bar, you know, if anything, you know, I, I think we continue to raise the bar in the Big Ten, and, you know, you know everyone, everyone wants to compete against us. Brenda, along the lines about being in the Big Ten, I think this is the ninth season. You folks have been in the conference. That's two four-year cycles going in. How has the league changed in the last decade, and, and how uh, what has that uh, created for you guys as a staff? Yeah, it's changed dramatically, and it's all started great coaches that, that are in the league and can really scout. But, you know, I think obviously recruiting, the transfer portal, recruiting the right fit, You've seen that every program in the Big Ten now 
ha- has really improved their roster. So every game you're going to have a bottle, have a battle from from top to bottom. You're going to have to be ready to compete. If you if you come in and you're not prepared, you you're you're not going to be able to win that game. Thank you.